it's the now sound. It's what's happening. On the 7th of April 2008, the National Commission held its second regional hearing on federal abuse in the name of immigration enforcement in Boston, Massachusetts. Following are the remarks made by Senator John Kerry. I know people who work at the Immigration and Customs Enforcement are the good people. They're not the people who are malicious or setting out to do it. People sometimes government policies just don't get thought out well enough. And sometimes leaders aren't as sensitive to certain things as they ought to be. And I think this was really one of those situations. It took the Bianco raid in New Bedford and the chaos that followed, uh, the tearing apart of families, the mothers who were mad, sick children who were terrified with no idea of where their parents went or where they were in federal custody hundreds of miles away in some cases, to finally bring to light how, whether it's inadvertently or purposefully, out of order, that policy can become. And on March 6th of last year, of all the dangers that were lurking through America because of our broken immigration system, of all of the threats being assessed by the Department of Homeland Security and the FBI, Apparently, on that day, none were more insidious or challenging to us or more menacing than several hundred people, mostly young women in the Bedford, who were making backpacks for the U.S. Army. The Bianco raid somehow attracted 500 armed federal agents and law enforcement officials, which to me remains not just surprising, but stunning. When, you, when, when according to their own press release, the ICE press release, the reason for the raid was to arrest the owner and the manager who were preying on the immigration workforce. And shockingly, the owner and the manager were out of custody and back in their home sleeping there long before any of those people who were being preyed on in those circumstances. 500 armed agents for five people, ostensibly. Uh, but as you read through the press release, you eventually get to this line. Quote, hundreds of MBI employees will be interviewed to determine their alienage and immigration status. So I interpolate from that. Well, then most of the armed agents involved in the raid were actually there to conduct interviews. But that's kind of ridiculous on the surface because, uh, you, know, you know, most of us understand what the word interview means. Uh, it means talking to somebody. It means having a conversation. Possibly ICE on that day had a different dictionary. Uh, and they interpreted it differently because this is how they conducted an interview. Uh, they sent our federal agents to workplace. They handcuffed and manacled their interviewees, loaded many of those interview subjects on the buses, drove them 100 miles away to a military base, denied those interviewees access to a legal counsel or a translation service so they could actually be understood, and didn't let the interviewees make arrangements so that their families knew who they were flew those interviewees across the country to detention centers and refused to release any information on their health, well-being, or location. And then it was supposedly ready to begin its interviews. Well, you know, we all understand that ICE does important work. One week after the Echo raid, ICE arrested 12 people on pornography charges in Utah. A few weeks later, they levied a very important hundred million dollar fine on a company that was illegally exporting secret military data overseas. But the way that they conduct workplace raids and detain people does not meet the standards of the United States of America.
That is why I have introduced legislation called the Families First Immigration Enforcement Act to ensure that nothing like the Bianco raid or the Van Nuys raid uh, in California happens again. The le my legislation will do the following. I think it's fair and it's sensible. It requires ICE to afford access to state social service agencies to screen and interview a detainee. A majority of the problems that we faced in these raids arose from the fact that people were too scared or too intimidated, I heard that coming from the panel a moment ago, to provide information to the ICE agents. Social service agencies are also better able, better equipped to handle children and family needs that arise. And they have representatives who speak the detainees' first language, which was a major problem down in New Bedford. Uh, when I went down to New Bedford, I went down the, the, just the next day and met with people at the church in New Bedford and listened to the stories for several hours. And it was really shocking. I met a four-year-old child who was separated from her mother. There, there was a, a, a nursing child separated from the mother. And there were people who had no idea where their family were or what had happened. Now, we know we have to enforce the law. We don't understand that. But folks, we can do it with, with the values of our country on display in a way that, uh, that, that meets a much, much higher standard and not the kind of tactics that's back with the country uh, very alien uh, to the one that we know and love and live in and are proud of. Uh, my legislation would also require that people being detained be placed in detention within the jurisdiction of the local ICE field office. And that makes sense. That's where it ought to be processed. That's where you can keep people in touch with each other. There's no reason, no reason at all to ship a detainee from New Bedford to Texas unless you're trying to intimidate them and scare people uh, and send a different message and isolate them from that community. In addition, if it is determined on humanitarian grounds that release ought to be granted because of those humanitarian reasons, those with medical conditions, we did have people with serious medical conditions and so forth, then, then pregnant uh, women or nursing mothers or parents who are the sole caretakers of, uh, of uh, minor children, then they ought to be released on their own cognizance with a minimum bond or placed into the Intensive Supervision Appearance Program, ISAP, which gives ICE the ability to track the person, but it allows the families to be reunited and allows former detainees to receive medical and uh, social service attention. We also require that there be a toll-free number provided automatically for families that they can use immediately in order to report their own relationship to a detainee so that people know there's somebody there with whom they could have contact uh, with established roots uh, in the community or to give, give and to get more information about their loved one. Uh, ICE also needs to allow detainees access to legal orientation presentations provided by independent, non-governmental agencies through the legal orientation program. And that will cut down on confusion and allow detainees to fully understand what their rights are, which incidentally are fully defined in the system today. A little more than a year has now passed since this raid in New Bedford. And I think it's a real tribute to the people of New Bedford and to the community there, the way they came together as a consequence of this raid and really made the community available to people to try to respond to the, uh, to the feelings and to the realities that a lot of people felt as a consequence of that raid taking place. That community is beginning to heal now. It's taken that long. Uh, but uh, we want to make certain that there's nothing like what happened in New Bedford happens again. And the way to do it is to listen carefully to the findings of this commission. This is Kyle Debosay from Citizen Orange signing off.